lot of the things we're talking about in religion are a little bit beyond uh, uh, our, our regular understanding, that, that they require poetic ways of expressing them. I decided to go on a quest to try and understand who God was, why he would use these symbols, what sacred architecture is. Why does the Lord want a set of symbols to be on the outside of the temple? And what in the world do they mean? The temple is one big symbol with thousands of symbols making up the one big symbol. Once you grasp what they can stand for eternally, then the entire ceremony of the temple is opened up in a new and more meaningful way. kinds of architecture convey some sorts of meanings. Very often government buildings are larger and more elaborate. It's not too unusual to see a state capitol on a hilltop crowned with some symbol of democracy or justice. With religious architecture, there are ways that the building indicate what it's for. Temples are meeting places between heaven and earth and they are the nearest one can get to the other side without the heavens being directly open to us. All religious buildings are inviting us to think about things greater than the rest of our lives. They are places of instruction and places where God can come and dwell upon the earth to give his direction to us. He desires to be our teacher. The best way to be instructed is through his spirit at his school. The idea that when we write down our addresses in Salt Lake City, it's really coordinates of how far we are from the temple and all it means. That's a constant reminder of how important that is. The Lord has all these symbols associated with the temple, and so our job is to figure out what's he trying to say. Historically, Mormon buildings, like the buildings of other religions, have various hints in uh, symbolic carvings or decorations or in the way the space is organized, architectural forms that reflect the use that the building's to be put to and the meaning that people are supposed to draw from their experience there. God uses symbols because they can communicate with his children at multiple levels simultaneously. Uh, children of different cultures, children in different time frames, centuries apart and of various uh, levels of understanding. The Lord uses symbols that are familiar to all of us. For example, birds, fish, bread, or even the sun and the moon and the stars. He uses these objects to teach simple truths, and then when we're prepared, he uses these very same objects to teach truths of eternal life. I think symbols communicate truths, ideas, doctrines, it keeps the unprepared from receiving things they shouldn't have, but it opens up layers of wonderful meaning for those that are ready for a lot more. Sometimes words can't quite explain some issues, some doctrines, some ideas with quite the same depth or maybe even the impact that symbols do. If you're dealing with specific symbols, in other words, something visual, you're gonna think about it more. Jesus' teachings are full of symbolic elements, and I think that meets a kind of basic human need that we want uh, expressions of, of these profound principles in ways that challenge us to think about them and also are memorable. Brigham Young very much believed in everyday symbols. He wanted to have them on musical instruments above bank buildings. I mean, we had symbols everywhere in early Mormon culture. We're not quite sure where all of the symbolic imagery on the outside of the building came from. We can assume that Brigham Young, who was watching every detail of the planning of the building, was certainly involved in that, so that uh, some of it may have come through his direction. There may be creative elements from Truman Angel and other people who were involved in the planning of the temple, looking for ways to express their theology and the decorations on the building.